Scientists thrive by studying the abnormal, the unexpected, and, well, sometimes the downright twisted. Among the most stunning deviations from what we expect to see in nature are flatfish, a broad group of ocean fish that includes species you may know by the names halibut, sole, brill, tonguefish, dab, place, turbot, and flounder. What makes flatfish so intriguing are their bizarre body adaptations to their sandy ocean floor environment. Flatfish are born like us and most vertebrates with eyes on opposite sides of their head. But after about six months, one eye starts to gradually move toward the other side of the head as development continues. In the end, this bizarre structural deviation from normality gives them an asymmetry that is simply shocking. As science blogger Carl Zimmer has suggested, in a world made by Picasso, the flounder would fit right in. How did these contortionists come to be? Charles Darwin puzzled over the revolution and actually got it wrong. By the time of his sixth edition of his great work on the origin of species, he still lacked knowledge of heredity and for want of insight, he began to revisit the ideas of Lamarck, who had argued 60 years before that organisms' life experiences, rather than inheritance alone, modified the characteristics of their young. In other words, Darwin argued that if a flatfish stretched its eyes hard enough, its offspring would have to stretch them a little bit less. We now know that this is never how evolution works, but Darwin and evolution critics of his day struggled to explain how a transitional eye placement could ever convey a gradually increasing advantage. As genetics started to meld with evolution in the early 20th century, some biologists began to question whether evolution really needed to be gradual to occur. Could evolution sometimes take a sudden salting leap? If so, this would solve the seemingly difficult problem of transitional eye placement in flatfish. Such a punctuated change might result from a radical mutation that immediately conveyed such a strong benefit that it readily propagated through a population. During this speculation, the lack of transitional fo flatfish fossils prevented resolution as to how rapidly such traits developed. Now, suddenly, this has all changed. The story of how twisty-eyed flatfish came to be has been straightened out in favor of Darwin's original concept of evolution through gradual natural selection. This week in the British journal Nature, Matt Friedman of the University of Chicago reports his high-tech examination of fossil flatfish from museum collections across Europe. Using the science of tomography, Friedman obtained 3D images from fossils of Amphistium and a new genus called Heteronectes, collected from northern Italy long before, but not appreciated until now. Rarely do we ever see both sides of a fossil such as these at once, and the detail of the CT imagery shows unambiguously that one eye of these 45 million year old flatfish was transitional in position, exactly as predicted by selection. This discovery dispels the old scientific argument that such a transitional trait could not exist because it would be disadvantageous. It did exist, and rapid evolution was simply unnecessary. So why then would an incomplete eye migration have evolutionary value? Friedman pulled clues from observations of living species that propped themselves up using their fins while laying flat. In this manner, ancestral flatfish could watch for predators overhead and their prey ahead of them. With this synthesis, Friedman not only provides us with evidence that gradual transition occurred, but also credible explanations for the pathway of why. Not surprisingly, the prior lack of transitional forms in the fossil record has kept flatfish on creationist palate for generations. Decades ago in his book, The Blind Watchmaker, Richard Dawkins used the Picasso-esque imperfections of flatfish to illustrate the failed logic of the concept of special design in nature. He wrote, quote, No sensible designer would have conceived such a monstrosity if given a free hand to create a flatfish on a clean drawing board. But, he continued, evolution never starts from a clean drawing board. Friedman's most extraordinary discovery provides a stunning example of evolution in action that graphically illustrates how Earth's biodiversity came to be so magnificent. 
despite being among the most bizarre of all of Earth's creatures. Flatfish illustrate the endless potential of evolution to create forms most beautiful.